What's up everyone, this is Max Red. Today we're going to cover some techniques used in flipping loops and samples with Cubase Pro. Whether you make your own loops or buy them online, it is good to be able to make them unique and set them apart from everyone else's. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to use a loop from Splice. It is a great way to find samples for your project. You can select options such as instrument type, like this piano here. You can choose by genre, loop versus one shot, even by BPM. We're going to select the more popular one that you might recognize. So let's listen to some of these now. Once we find a loop that we like, we can simply drop it into our project and get started. Notice the tempo of this loop is at 130 BPM. Let's work our project at 100 BPM. After we set the tempo, we can now hit musical mode. This ensures that our loop will actually fit the tempo of our project. It'll definitely change the vibe right away. Let's listen to it now. We can now set our locators for 8 bars, and we can play with the pitch of our loop up or down. Let's go up 3 semitones. To change the pitch of our loop, we simply type in the value in the transpose tab. For this one, we'll go down 3 semitones. Let's actually stay with the higher pitch sound and we'll go back up three semitones. One thing I like to do is to duplicate my loop. That way I can keep the original one unchanged and just make the edits to the copied version. For this example, I'm going to cut our loop in half and just work with a 4 bar section. I can then use the time stretch tool and expand our 4 bars into 8 more bars and change up the sound once more. Let's see what effect that has on our loop now. Another thing that we can do to our loop is to simply add a reverse. Once we apply that process, we can see how that changes the entire vibe. Let's listen. A common way for making your loop unique is to chop up the sample and rearrange the sections. Make sure our snap to zero crossing is on and we can use our scissor tool to cut our loop. We'll make our cuts every half measure for this example. We'll also make a couple of cuts at a quarter measure and then we can reorder all the sections. Once we make our cuts, we can simply drag them into the playlist and Cubase will create a new audio track for the new arrangement. 
We can always rearrange them if we need to. Let's listen to what this sounds like first. Notice that we're getting a lot of clicks in between our sections. To eliminate the clicks, we select all the sections and hit X to apply crossfades. Before we address all the clicks, I want to rearrange some of these sections first. We're still getting some of those clicks, so we make sure the crossfades are in. We may have to zoom in and fix that problem. For practical purposes, we can address the clicks on a later video. For now, I want to bounce out the reversed and chopped loop so we can continue making edits to it independently. Be sure to name your new track so you can keep track of all the different changes you've made as you go. Let's pitch up this sample of the loop. We can EQ some of those harsh frequencies. We can also add a reverb for effect like this Valhalla Vintage Verb. We'll go with the Dirty Hall setting. We can then try to reverse our newly created loop with the reverb and see what that sounds like. Let's make a comparison between the original loop and the one we created after all of the edits. We'll have to change the tempo back to 130 to hear the original. Okay, let's hear that now. Now let's listen to the edited version. I kind of like it at 130. There are many ways to use Cubase in making your loops unique and interesting. That's all I have for today. Please subscribe if you haven't and hit like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.